Hey, the quietest, safest, lightest, cheapest helmets. As in any gear breakdown, we just need our donut and our angle grinder. <laughs> So the shell's job is the same as a youth pastor's, prevent penetration. But also spread force across more of the foam, absorbing more impact. Up till the failure point, at which plastic helmets crack, resulting in a shittier spread of the natural nut butter. While this fiberglass and carbon awry can be pushed to the crackling point. Huh. Better spread. Yet Shoei's RF1400 improves on all of them. It's their most elastic shell. Let's simplify our helmet as a hollow sphere, because a benevolent physicist always leaves the finicky work for engineers. So, long past the failing displacement of plastic or fiber, since this is elastic, we still get a perfectly flat surface at the point of impact. Maximal flawless dispersion. And like the man with two penises says, you've only seen the half of it. What we just witnessed was the strain of impact, being translated into perpendicular elastic strain. And to scientists, this relationship is known as the Poisson ratio, but to motorcyclists, it means that an elastic shell can be tuned to divert crash force by itself and the RF1400 eats impact even before it starts dispersing across the foam, which elastic shells happen to do flawlessly, as we know. Safest showy ever. But Tokyo, we have a problem. See, in huge crashes, with huge displacement, a hollow elastic sphere will undergo geometric buckling phases. And that is obviously bad for your head. The trick to preventing buckling is to avoid discontinuities. Which is why this is Shoei's most continuous shell. All hand-woven, hand-chosen fiber. So even at the bends, and spoilers, the thickness stays exactly the same. Whew. If Isaac Newton needed a helmet, and he did, he'd choose this. Elasticity is huge for sound cancellation, too. See, designing the quietest helmet in the world is easy. There. I've done it. But my creation has a truly fatal flaw in that you must cut your head off to use it. Mm. It's these darn neck holes. And that's how the noise sneaks in. Shoei's elastic shell lets them get away with an unusually tight entry, which must be stretched open. Even then, my ears are being sheared, but once sealed inside, it's as quiet as it is safe. Wow! Next layer is the slip plane. MIPS lets the padding move independently of the foam and shell meaning your head can rotate up to 15 millimeters inside the helmet. So whatever whiplash happens out here doesn't all go to your brain. Hmm. Does that really help? Well, a lid with MIPS does allow less rotational acceleration than an identical lid without. Scale that sample over 100 helmets, then slap my ass and call me Susan. A 30% reduction in strain is mean. This is the single cheapest thing a manufacturer can do to keep you alive. It amounts to a scrap of plastic and a licensing fee. Take this Z1R range, or is it a Joe Rocket RKT25, or a 509 Delta R3? Eh, whatever. It's a generic product. 150 bucks, ready as a Russian bride to take anyone's name. But because Z1R went and got MIPS, theirs is the legitimately good choice. 
Now pads are the most overlooked safety layer. There is zero point in getting the rest right if these fit worse than Ja Rule's jeans. I guess not. It's a bigger problem than we realize because all pads loosen over time. So do I buy an uncomfortably tight helmet now? Then have it fit safely in a year? Then loosely in two? Then hope I can still buy replacements in three? That sucks. Only Scorpion was pissed enough to engineer a solution. You pump it up snug for each ride, making year three as safe as year one. This also lets me add a couple pumps on track. And pads are like puckering. There's a certain toitness that is uncomfortable at 100, but oddly comforting at 200. The Scorpion lets me find the difference. Apropos for this EXO R1 Air, which is the helmet Quartararo races in MotoGP. And technically, Fabio has a small head, so only that size was sent to FIM's lab for homologation. But as near as makes no difference, yes, this is an FIM helmet that you and I can afford. So what? Well, DOT allows up to 400 Gs to your dome, meaning you might not die, and that's good enough for them. Snell is still banging their heads against a guided <laughs> double drop. 7.75 meters per second, less than 275 Gs on both impacts. The trouble is almost no one crashes like a pogo stick, so mostly this standard just requires overly rigid helmets that cause concussions and ordinary tumbles. ECE knows this, so they do a single unguided free fall, hmm. meaning translational impact requirements are a bit softer, but that lets them ask for rotational protection less than 10.4 kilorad per second squared peak angular acceleration, better than 0.78 on the brick test. Make no mistake, and these are two different ideas of safety. A helmet may pass ECE or Snell, but not often both. Current research suggests ECE has it right, Snell is at least righter than DOT. But FIM, FIM slays them all. Their translational impact thresholds approach Snell. Their rotational impact thresholds trump ECE. And there's almost no money in a standard like this because almost no helmets pass it. But why should FIM give a shit? They make millions on MotoGP, and their only concern is protecting those assets in the few safest helmets in the world. It takes a company like Scorpion darling of the frugal bastards to bring an FIM helmet to market for $600. That they throw a tinted visor and pin lock in the box, that's just bragging. Our last layer is, do you see it? Empty space. HJC's F70 does that best. It has an expansive field of view, such that the orb becomes a greenhouse without vampiric levels of sunshade. But on a cool day with the visor open, you'd swear you were wearing nothing at all. Only the weight ruined yesteryear's illusion. And fiberglass was a 1620 gram reminder of the helmet's presence. So for 2021, HJC offers it in carbon, saving 240 grams or the equivalent of a European ground squirrel sitting on your head. With feather weight, a picture window, and streamed lines, the F70 Carbon invokes Rolls Royce's three maxims of luxury light, space, and quietness. I'm fortunate to test a new helmet for each new day, and I curse that job because if I had the choice, I'd always take the Rolls. It's the second cheapest, too, after our Z1R range MIPS, slip plane safety on a budget. Then our Scorpion EXO R1 Air, puffable padding and an FIM rating. Then our showy RF 1400, whose shell is a stroke of elastic genius. Now we know what goes into the best helmets of 2021. <laughs>